Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to filter files and directories with RipGrep, even if you're not inside of a Git repo. So one nice thing about RipGrep is if you are in a Git repo with a Git ignore file, it's going to use all the rules that you have there to automatically filter out matches so you don't see them. That could be quite useful. Now, in this case, we are not in a Git repo, but we can still get the same benefits. And this is going to work both on the command line as well as inside of something like Vim, if you happen to use the FCF here to do some fuzzy matching on files. For example, this is the Hugo version of my blog that I just converted everything over to. You know, I have 500 different blog posts here. And often Oftentimes, if I want to do a search here to get into a specific post, you know, I would fuzzy match for something like blog and then, you know, whatever, some partial match on the blog title here. Let's just say I'm looking for one with curl. And then you can see very quickly here that I have some matches on the bottom. I can just grab this one and jump right to where I want to be, which is quite nice. But the reason it looks so clean and so easy to get to this one specifically is because I do have this one dot ignore file. And that's really the focus of this video here. It looks very similar to a git ignore file, but in this case, it has no relevance to a git repo. But I'm configuring this file here to ignore quite a few different directories like this public directory, this published directory, also a whole bunch of different images here. In fact, actually, if I were to comment, comment this out and do a similar type of search that we did before, like blog curl, you know, there's going to be all sorts of different matches here that are just creating a lot of noise in the output here, which is going to make it very hard for me to find the file that I actually want. For example, you know, this first match here on the bottom, this is the published directory. And, you know, Hugo is just a static site generator, very similar to Jekyll in that regard here. And this published directory has the actual HTML file that it generates. And I don't want to open up that file. I want to actually open up the markdown file. But you can also see here too, that uh, there are other directories here like assets and public, and they have uh, files here with a very similar name to the markdown file itself. We're using curl with multi-line JSON data. You know, this is uh, a JPEG here in both the assets and the public directory. So right away, you know, we've got four different matches here on the bottom, but really all the one that I care about is the markdown file here. So what I've done here is, yeah, just ignore some of those rules here. And again, I can do my search and now it's going to filter those out and make it super easy to find the things that I want. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. So there are technically two different ways you can do this without a get repo, uh, like a real get repo, I should say. One, using this ignore file, which is uh, what I re would recommend to do. And there is another option here too, where you can actually make a git ignore file and then just create an empty git repo. And then RipGrep will use that even if the git repo is empty. Now, you might be wondering, like, why don't I have my blog inside of a Git repo or something like that? That is because I have over a thousand images and there's about a gig and a half of images there. You know, I didn't want to quite push it up to GitHub just because, uh, yeah, that repo is going to get quite large with that amount of images there. So, yeah, you know, while I was doing this migration from Jekyll to Hugo, I just wanted to improve my experience for writing and publishing blog posts. And I figured, you know what, you know, now's a good time to look a little bit more into RipGrep and see if I can do a little bit better formatting or filtering here when it comes to, you know, not finding results here in certain files. So, so with that said, if you have any questions, questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.